So please welcome to the stage, Joey R. Harrigan. Thanks everyone. Hey, uh, my name is Joey. I work on the HTML and DOM team uh, on Chrome, and I'm here to talk about OpenUI and SelectList and various other things we've been talking about in the OpenUI group. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna talk about OpenUI and some past things we've done, like popover, some present things like select list and invoke target, and some future things we're planning to work on in the future, like multi-select and combo boxes. Um, so OpenUI is a relatively new W3C community group. Um, and much like the CSS working group, we have weekly meetings with an agenda, and you know, we admit at them and um, try to come to resolutions you know, within the meeting on each issue to make progress on all of our stuff we talk about. Um, and yeah, we have a GitHub repo, just like CSS Working Group, where you can file issues. We have a website with explainers and other stuff. And there's also a Discord server um, that like a lot of random people come in and ask questions. Um, and yeah, so like this community group, like the CSS Working Group by comparison is like more like, you know, the browser implementers and those kind of people. But OpenUI is like more focused on like developers. Like we have like a lot of just like random developers in there who, you know, provide feedback on like, useful things we could be working on, um, and also like a lot of accessibility people who help us design new UI elements and all that good stuff. So yeah, uh, if any of you are interested in anything from this talk, please come join us. Uh, we really appreciate you know more help in designing all these new things we've been working on. Um, so first up is the popover attribute. Um, so this all started in open UI, um, and it's pretty much done now. It's been specced in WebWG and is shipping in all browsers. And what it does, uh, you can see in this little animation here. Um, so we have a button to declaratively open a popover. And a popover is an element with this attribute. And as soon as you put the attribute on it, it's display none. And then when you show it, either declaratively with the button or through JavaScript, uh, it becomes display block. And it is rendered in the top layer. So it's it goes on top of all the other elements in the page, no matter what their Z index is or anything like that. And the dialog element uses similar technology. And this is kind of like a, a more generic version of that. Um, so you can just kind of put any element you want into the top layer with this. And it accepts this auto value, which gives it some behaviors like light dismiss, where you can click away from it. You can see in this GIF, like when I move the cursor away from it and then click, it closes the popover. And you can also, instead of auto, you can say manual. And then that'll remove that behavior along with some other things. Um, and yeah, so like this is a really big su success from OpenUI because uh, it's being implemented in all the browsers right now and we have really good consensus on it. So uh, yeah, the next thing that we're doing a lot of work on right now is select list. So the idea behind select list uh, is that the existing select element doesn't work great for a lot of web developers. So, you know, it's really like not customizable on a lot of platforms that has like native UI that can't be customized. And a lot of web developers, you know, they don't want to just have this super generic looking thing. They want to customize it to look like they want it on their website. Maybe they want to put more things than just text in it. Um, so that's kind of the idea of select list is that we want to provide developers with a customizable alternative so they don't have to build their own. And then we can also like make sure it has like good accessibility, good autofill, general behaviors, and like works well. Um, so you can kind of see in these uh, screenshots here, um, you can change the font, change the color. You can put what we call rich content into options because you can put arbitrary HTML into your option elements now with this. So I have like a country selector with the country flags as like actual image elements. Um, you can customize the button that opens the list box as well and put you know whatever content you want in there in addition to reflecting the content of the currently selected option. And you can also like style it differently. So you can like take that selected option and style it differently with CSS than how it's shown in the list box uh, to kind of really, really create like whatever you might want to make. And so this is actively being developed in OpenUI and it's being prototyped in Chromium. Um, and yeah, like we're going through a lot of the issues in the weekly meetings and stuff right now for a select list. Um, so the list box element, this is a supporting element for select list, uh, but it also can be used standalone. So as you can see in this like code snippet here, um, I have a select list and then I declare a list box element and inside of that, I put my options and some other divs that are not options. And you can see it renders all of them. And this is totally in contrast to the existing select element because the only thing you can put in there that'll render is option elements and just the text inside them. But here you can have options and you 
put all your text images, like anything you want inside the list box, in addition to inside the option elements. Um, and so this enables more use cases of having richer content inside a list box. Um, and ideally, as part of shipping this, there's been a, lot, a lot of interest in like shipping the list box element standalone to be used outside of select list as something that implements the ARIA roles and behaviors that people are really interested in. Um, so yeah, you could have a list box without a select list and show it inside a page or like as a popover um, to enable more use cases. Uh, the next thing is the selected option element. So it's been pretty hard to find a way to um, mirror the content from the option into the button in a way that's like rich. So like, you know, a lot of use cases, so you can see this like country selector on the right. Um, we have an image element next to this Denmark uh, option inside the option element. And we want to mirror that into the button as like a full rich content. Um, and we want to do it declaratively. Uh, rather than having to use JavaScript. So the selected option element within select list lets you do that. And what it does is that every time that the selected option changes, um, the browser will copy all of the DOM contents of the selected option, the selected option element into, this is confusing. So like the option element you've selected is copied into the selected option element every time it's changed. Um, and then since it exists in two different places, we can render it in the button and the list box while the list box is open, you know, rendering two places at once. And via CSS, you can also target them distinctly to make them render differently. So you can see in this other example with the heart, um, you know, I wanted my button to show the emoji, but I also want the option to have the text. So with some CSS, you know, fully declaratively, I can say like, okay, I want to display none of this text when it's inside the selected option, but when it's in the actual option, you know, you can still have all the content rendered. Um, so that's a really powerful thing with select list. And then um, you can also see in this code snippet, we have a button type equals select list. And this is the declarative way to kind of override the default button that's in the select list uh, and put whatever content you want in there. So by default, if you don't provide a button type equals select list at all, it'll just, the browser will automatically make one for you, uh, which is kind of like what this example does, the previous one where you didn't declare a button. Uh, and here's a really cool demo made by Yuna. Um, so this is kind of like a recreation of the uh, GitHub PR um, merging button. Um, and this is a select list, and it's 100% declarative with no JavaScript. And you can kind of see there's a list box with like tons of rich content inside the options, and it's rendered differently inside the button um, to basically recreate the thing that GitHub has. And yeah, we're hoping that since it's fully declarative, people will really be attracted to this. Um, and of course, we also get all the nice accessibility and autofill behaviors um, because it uses this new browser element. Um, and yeah, so like we've been working a lot on select list, and there's some interesting open and recently resolved issues. Um, so one of the ones that's still open right now that I just opened is should the selected option element have a check mark next to it in the list box? Um, we got some feedback from accessibility people that visually indicating. Uh, without just like colors, which option is selected in the list box is really important. So right now we're thinking about, you know, always showing a checkbox in the list box next to the selected item. Um, it's not something we currently have implemented, uh, but definitely looking into it. Um, the next one is should the selected value copy the inner HTML of the selected option. This issue was kind of how we came up with the selected option element. Um, but you know we're still open to ideas of like how we could do this better because making the browser you know, copy all the DOM contents is not totally perfect or uh, idiomatic to how other things work. Um, but I think it's the best solution we have right now. And the next one is don't reuse slot part and behavior. So select list originally, the design had these slot and behavior attributes instead of new tag names. So like the list box element used to just be a div with popover equals auto and uh, slot equals list box and behavior equals list box. And through all these things, you could like compose um, what is now the list box element. But after some early feedback from the HTML editors, we decided to just like make new actual element tag names for all these things instead of making like a new behavior attribute or reusing the slot attribute to slot things in. Um, next thing, some more current work is the invoke target attribute. So to go to like explain this better, I think it's cool if I go back to popover. So we have this declarative way with popovers to show a popover with this popover target attribute. Um, and after we shipped this, you know, people gave some feedback like, 
what if we could do this for more things than just popovers? What if we could do it for dialogues and you know more stuff? And so now we're working on a generic version that might replace popover target called invoke target. Um, and it takes the context of the target element that you're that you're you know pointing it to and figure out figures out what to do with it. So if it's a popover, it'll show it as a popover. It's a dialogue, it'll show the dialogue. Um, I think it's still under development. I'm not sure exactly what the full scope of different supported elements and behaviors is. Um, but yeah, this is a really cool thing. Um, and someone from github.com, Keith, is actively prototyping it in multiple browsers and is working on specs for it, which is super awesome. Um, and now for some forward-looking stuff. So select list, multi-select is something we'd like to do in the future. You know, like a lot of design systems that like, you know, have list box or like select replacement things also have multi-selects. And it's like definitely an important use case we want to support across a lot of websites. Um, and we could support it both for the select list element and the list box element. Um, and the idea is that it's a replacement for select multiple. So select multiple today is not super great. You can see the screenshot on the left is what we ship in Chrome for select multiple. It's a list box with multiple items, but selecting multiple of them at the same time is really hard. You have to like know to like click one and then like control or shift click another one to select multiple of them. It's like almost like a secret behavior. It's like really not easy to use. Um, it's not very good. And um, you can see on the right, like in iOS, they implemented like a native uh, picker for it that looks a lot more like the thing we want to like ship, but is also customizable. Where you can see there's actual checkboxes. You know, you tap the button, it brings up this whole picker, and you can like pick multiple things. Um, so that's kind of like looks like what we want to do. We want to like you know just add a bunch of check marks and check boxes to select list and list box to make it multi-select. But um, there's not like a ton of active design work on this yet, and there's definitely some pretty fundamental questions like how do you render or represent like multiple selected items, so, like both in like JavaScript, but also in like the button if we want to like show multiple things. Like in iOS here, they have, like it says two items if you select multiple things in the button. Maybe that's what people want, maybe not. I'm not really sure. But if any of you have any ideas, please let me know. Uh, some more future work. Uh, so we're also looking at making a combo box element that's customizable. So today, we have input type equals text with the data list element. And through that, you can create a combo box where you know, it's a text input, you can start typing into it, and then this drop down will show that has a filtered set of all the options in your list box. And, um, you know, this is not really customizable right now. Like the drop down itself is like a totally native browser thing that you can't change anything about. Um, input type equals text is also not very customizable. Um, so, this is something we'd also like to look at for a new customizable control. And it's a little bit related to select list because it also uses a list box. Um, but yeah, it has this freeform text, and it's another thing that people are very interested in working on. Um, yeah, so that's all the content I have on OpenUI stuff we're working on right now. Um, we have an explainer for a select list. I really appreciate if anyone is, who's interested to come try it out. Um, you know, it, it ships behind experimental web platform features, so please go use it. And yeah, come to OpenUI if you're interested. And yeah, that's it. Does anybody have questions? It's very exciting. To, it's very exciting to see this. It's, it's very exciting to see this work going forward. Um, thank you for pushing on it so hard. Uh, how are y'all thinking about the data models that underlie these elements? So one of the, the long running problems with HTML form elements has been that the, the data model and the, the data flow through the internal kind of uh, MVC or MVVC, depending on how you want to think about how we construct them, has been kind of closed off. And it's exposed through events, but it's pretty rough. So how are you thinking about this? And are you going to expose any of this behavior out to script, for instance, as mix-ins or as other reusable behaviors for folks who are implementing their own custom elements? I feel like I haven't fully wrapped my brain around the the issue. So like, um, so like with select list, you can like assign a value into it, 
via like a string and it'll match up with like an option to like switch the selected option. Um, but do you have like a more specific example of like, okay, sure. <laughs> Thank you, Joy. Um, I work a lot on accessibility in Chromium and with the ARIA working group. Uh, and I was curious at how far along are you are with the combo box stuff? Because I know of the like deep issue that we have that I still don't know how we're going to fix. And I don't know if your solution does have a fix to that. That would be interesting. Yeah, we haven't really started working on it at all yet. It's just like people within the group are like, oh, yes, we got to start working on combo box. And it's like maybe a thing that'll follow select list. Um, but yeah. It sounds like the perfect time to hear your feedback because we haven't started working on it yet. So I'd love to hear more about it. Sounds good. I can send you a few uh, GitHub uh, issues from yep. other repos. Please do. Hi, Maren. Hi. Um, one of the advantages of the current basic select is um, that it's kind of painted on a separate widget layer, right? It's, it's outside the web view. Um, do we get that advantage with any of these? Um, components, especially the select list, or are we kind of in a shadow DOM style world? Yeah, unfortunately, the, the pop-up is going to be limited to the web contents because it uses popover under the hood, and it's all like, yeah, just basic web stuff that we're using. Um, I think this does have some advantage, though. Like, all those, like, native pop-up things that can escape the browser window have, like, really big issues. Like, for example, like, uh, input type equals color right now, like, the pop-up, like using like control C and control V to like copy and paste stuff out of the things like doesn't work. I literally spent like two days trying to figure this out on my own and debugging it and I could not figure it out. But all this new stuff that uses, you know, popover and is actually within the web content, it's like that stuff is all gonna work perfectly. So um but yeah, I mean if select already works perfectly for you, then you can keep using it. Um but yeah. Uh, is the existing select control going to be rewritten to basically be using select list, or are they going to remain separate? I think they're going to remain separate. Yeah, like I said, if if select already works for you, like you know, it already has. Well, I hope it has good accessibility and autofill. I you know, and it has all the native stuff like on Mac OS. We use the the native OS picker and things like that. All right, looks like it. Thank you, Thank you.